Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South African coal miners are starting to take energy transition steps, despite booming market conditions for the energy mineral. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Firstly, Suriti Resources made a big renewables announcement this week. Yes, they're still a coal miner and they still emphasise that they're proudly a coal miner and they're going to be supplying mostly to Eskom and some coal to the export market, which, as you mentioned, is booming. Um, but they've moved, I think, in a very progressive way this week to start transitioning to becoming an energy company. We know that the long-term outlook for coal and coal mining uh, will decline as the world pushes the accelerator on its decarbonisation and coal being the most polluting um, of those, those energy minerals. Um, relative to, say, for instance, natural gas. So they've did a nearly 900 million rand acquisition, which has to go through the unusual processes of uh, uh, Reserve Bank approval as well as the Competition Commission approval. But they, they're purchasing a company called Windlab Africa, which has a portfolio of over three uh, gigawatts, mostly in South Africa and some in East Africa. They're part of a, a, a group that uh, in Australia that invests directly in renewable energy and has got technology to sort of measure wind resources. It's, it's a, an advanced technology in terms of that, which they'll still have access to as the South African company. But in South Africa, they've been a developer of projects up until now and haven't taken any stake. Now, as they transition into something called Sariti Green, they'll be able to take direct participation as a, a RPP, as a black owned company in terms of the Sariti uh, pedigree there has got a strong black ownership, uh, which adds a whole new dimension to the RPP market in South Africa, which has been dominated by European interests in particular. So it adds that dimension. But I think importantly for Sariti, starts that transition away from coal, even if it's a, a small step, but three gigawatts is nothing to to sneeze at and they will be starting some of those projects uh, they say uh, early next year in the first quarter of next year with the initial focus very much being in and around Mpumalanga. They've got a 450 megawatt portfolio, project portfolio of wind mostly in Mpumalanga but the Sariti Green made it clear they're not going to confine themselves only to wind. Uh, they're going to be looking at solar, PV, battery energy storage and potentially green hydrogen. So it's, uh, it's an important step by a, a large black owned coal miner to start moving in this way of transitioning uh, away from coal in the long term and towards more renewable energy and to become an energy company. Exara is also consolidating its renewables portfolio while High Flying Tungela is investing in solar. Yes, so Exara has always been, I think, the most forward looking uh, uh, of the coal companies around the energy transition has, and has been doing a lot in this space over the years. We know it's got an investment in Synergy, which used to be with Tata Power, and they built up a, an existing portfolio of, of, of mostly wind capacity. They are going to cons continue with that. They, they are repacing the way they're going to be investing. So they also had a three gigawatt portfolio. They're now looking at sort of 1.6 gigawatts firmly by 2030. but with the way the market in South Africa is changing and the ability to have much larger projects, which really suits wind and therefore suits in Pumalanga, which has a good wind resource. You know, you can have these, you don't no longer have these, uh, the, the 100 megawatt embedded generation cap. So I think that that means that more can come into the Exaro portfolio uh, quicker than the 1.6 that they're saying, stating by 2030. They've got experience in wind and they have uh, good partnerships in place, and particularly in Mpumalanga. Again, it's around the just energy transition. These coal miners have uh, existing workforces, have existing communities uh, and businesses relying on them. And if you can start absorbing some of uh, the, the workers and some of these communities into these Mpumalanga wind farms, it's very much aligned to the just e uh, energy transition. And they have a partnership with Enetrak in, in Mpumalanga that they're wanting to enter into a joint development agreement with. So it's also very uh, important steps, even though the headlines are that they've pulled back actually 
I think that it's, it's, a, it's a step forward. It's a reprioritization around South Africa and the lifting of the 100 megawatt cap is important. Tungela, as you say, high flying at the moment. Uh, anyone share portfolio that includes uh, Tungela has been getting quite good returns, uh, both from a share price rise as well as dividend payments. And they also, at the coal mine level, are starting to look at decarbonizing their assets and through solar. So even there, but they have a different strategy, I think, in terms of the energy transition, more as a pair of safe hands uh, as coal, the majors exit coal. They'll be that pair of safe hands uh, that are diligent at mine well and also have a rehabilitation pedigree and strategy, which I think is very important. We need a very responsible transition out of coal. We can't have uh, a sort of big bang where these coal mines are left uh, and aren't uh, rehabilitated properly. So I think a very important strategy uh, for, uh, as well to have a pair of safe hands in that industry. This is all happening against booming conditions in the coal market. Yes, so uh, you'd think, you know, it would all be about more coal and more exports and there is that happening. But I think as these miners look forward and look at their business going into the 2030s and, and beyond, and they see the pressure around uh, net zero by 2050 in many economies. We haven't, as South Africa, officially declared a 2050 target. Uh, we have a new very progressive NDC, which is a nationally determined contribution, which on the lower band does put us within that sort of net zero by 2050. But we have a, a band to work with. and. Uh, you know, there's going to be pressure all round, I think. Um, I know at the moment, because of the Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there's a lot of demand for coal, and we are kicking ourselves for not having the rail capacity in place yet again and m missing yet another super cycle. I think uh, the one figure I saw is that we, on tax front, we're going to forfeit something like 20 billion uh, just because we didn't have enough rail capacity and that's from a fiscal perspective never mind what these companies would have earned and what shareholders would have earned that's just the tax uh, tax take uh, has been penalized as a result of this terrible performance from transnet freight rail and uh, so but as they look forward 2030 is going to be uh, is not far away and the the efforts to accelerate the decarbonization are going to start uh, i think in earnest especially uh, as we come towards 2030 and uh, they, they are having to look at what their business models are going to look, look like in the, into the future. Yes, being responsible miners, but that will decline over time uh, and they'll need to be finding new revenue streams and the obvious new re revenue stream is in renewable energy, but uh, coupled with other energy technologies as well, I think there's going to be a lot of battery storage coming in also from these coal miners and I think in the medium term, uh, definitely because of uh, what's happening in Mpumalanga around Sassel and it wanting to transition to green hydrogen from grey hydrogen currently, there's an opportunity that's going to develop there. So I think green hydrogen in the medium term is going to be a big play for a lot of these companies. So it's going to be interesting to see how they evolve. They all have different strategies, but all of them on, on the whole know that coal, while it's booming at the moment, is going to taper as a business at some point and they need to find new new revenue and profit streams and energy renewable energy being the main play is the obvious uh, focus and uh, that's why i think it's receiving the priority it is now thank you that's the second take show for this week thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis also don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter